The theory of chaos states that a butterfly flapping in Brazil can start a storm in Texas. If that is the case, what do you think would be the effect of more than 7 billion butterflies on the Earth? Earth is the only planet that we know of where life exists. It is a perfectly balanced natural system, providing its inhabitants with water, food, air, energy. A natural system that sustains us all, humans as well as every other form of life. Throughout history, we have exploited nature and its resources for our own benefit. With the population increasing significantly, the uniqueness of Earth is being threatened by our growing needs and our uncontrolled consumption behavior. We are endangering life on Earth by forcing harmful changes on our climate and on all other interlinked ecosystems. The way we live deposits a daily footprint on the natural environment. In the last decades, scientific investigations have established as a fact that our behavior affects the planet in an unbalanced and chaotic way. The time series of meteorological measurements clearly show a sharp increase in temperature, the so-called global warming. Earth is a planet that's just far enough from the sun. Thanks to the natural greenhouse effect, the Earth's temperature ranges remain suitable for life to develop. However, as a result of man's activities, large quantities of various chemical compounds and especially carbon dioxide and methane have been injected into the atmosphere and are disrupting the natural equilibrium. As the amount of these gases is increasing, their warming effect increases. Since 1979, about 11% of the ice caps have melted thus raising the sea level and endangering areas such as Bangladesh, the Netherlands and Florida. Based on our scientific measurements, it is very likely that our interference with the natural processes of the Earth will lead to fast changes of the global oceanic circulation and could lead us to the next ice age. Up to the 19th century, humans lived and conducted their activities according to the weather changes. The food that they produced or found, the clothes that they wore, the design and the materials of their houses, their trips and trade were therefore adapted to the four seasons. From this coexistence, for thousands of years, they developed an empirical wisdom and respect for nature that now, in the technologically advanced 21st century, has been forgotten. We already have the first climatological signs that the season's pace has been disrupted, witnessing firsthand rainy summers and warm winters. We are facing nature's power and extreme phenomena such as droughts, intense hurricanes and extended floods that we are unable to confront, both technologically and administratively. These natural disasters have always been Earth's natural processes, 
but it is their frequency, strength, scale and timing that are exceptional. When we think which anthropogenic factors increase the levels of carbon dioxide, our first thought goes to transportation. But is it that simple? Since the Neolithic era, the wheel has become the cornerstone of pottery, agriculture, transportation and exploitation of mineral wealth. Using the wheel, humans managed to survive in their own land or move to a new one. And it was with the help of the wheel that humanity presented brilliant examples of its intellectual, aesthetic and technological civilization. The problem, then, is not the wheel, it's the engine. We have put a great deal of effort into developing combustion engines that use fossil fuels and emit hazardous chemical substances through their exhaust pipes. Using an average car, we emit 200 grams of carbon dioxide for each mile we drive. When we use the mass transportation systems, we reduce our personal emissions almost by half because we share the emissions with the other passengers. But no matter what our choices are, we have to take into consideration that there is always an environmental cost associated with every trip that we take. Of course, there is always the green solution of zero grams by using your own energy for short distances. In our everyday life, we rely on energy. We even consume energy when we don't actually need it. Many of our domestic appliances and gadgets remain in standby mode, raising significantly our energy consumption. It has been calculated that on average, 10% of electricity is used to cover the demand from the so-called phantom power. In the US, where this number reaches 20%, it corresponds to the production of 65 nuclear power plants. The lengthy underground and terrestrial transmission networks that crisscross our valleys and forests are already overloaded by our excessive consumption. Currently, our power plants are mainly based on fossil fuels, emitting huge quantities of greenhouse gases. Nuclear power plants produce radioactive waste whose disposal requires a sizable amount of energy. Our natural reserves of fossil fuels are becoming depleted and the existing power infrastructures cannot support the ever-expanding demand for electricity. Changing the pace of our lives that was based on the sun, we now manage to live and function both day and night. Contemporary industrial societies now function 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Humans have used sunlight and the sun's heat since antiquity.
The sun is the ultimate energy source, providing us with thousands of times the power we need. Consequently, humans have developed technologies which convert solar rays to heat and electricity. Electric power can also be produced by using many other natural resources, naturally replenished. We now harness energy from the wind, from falling waters, from moving oceans, the sea and the tides, and we have tapped geothermal energy from the earth. A big part of energy is used to produce goods that after a short time end up as trash. Recycling our waste has enormous environmental and economic benefits in the form of reduced landfill space, fewer demands for raw materials, less energy consumption, less water and decreased air pollution. Biodegradation time for a plastic bottle can reach up to 500 years. Recycling just 25 plastic bottles out of the billions that we use every year produces enough synthetic fibers for the fabrication of a fleece blanket. Aluminum can be recycled indefinitely. The recycling of an aluminum can costs only 5% of the energy used to originally create it. A recycled can returns back on the shelf within three weeks. In the United States alone, there is enough aluminum disposed in a three-month period for the country to rebuild its entire commercial airplane fleet. About 70% of the contents of our daily trash can be recycled. Metal to metal, glass to glass, organic waste to compost. While the recycling of paper can save billions of trees every year. For centuries, trees have offered us shelter, food, and have helped the conservation of the echo balance in nature. Trees act as a natural air conditioner, thus defining the climate of an area. Trees retain rainwater, enrich the soil with nutrients and prevent floods. Trees maintain the normal level of oxygen in the atmosphere through the process of photosynthesis. The emission of oxygen from trees is vital for all aerobic life on Earth. Trees and forests participate in the carbon storage and have created our reserves in fossil fuels. The fossil fuels that we use today were trees and plants millions of years ago. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in.
forests cover almost 30% of the Earth's surface, but today they are being threatened by humans. Deforestation is supplying the wood from trees to satisfy the needs of growing populations. Burning of the forest to claim the land for agriculture or to expand our cities is another form of deforestation. The release of vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere increases the intensity of the greenhouse effect. This extensive deforestation that is illegal in many parts of the world has devastating effects on the balance of global climate and biodiversity. Over one billion people depend on medicine based on substances from forest plants, and two billion people in developing countries rely on forests for their heating. In developed countries, on the other hand, it seems natural to have access, all year long, to exotic or out-of-season fruits and vegetables. To achieve this result, the food industry has created hybrid forms of fruits and vegetables, engineered for their color, weight, shelf life, and for their appeal under the lights of a supermarket. In the process of selecting the best candidates, thousands of varieties have stopped being cultivated and now have disappeared. We have even developed techniques in which plants are growing without soil or natural sunlight, are fed the exact amount of nutrients and water they need. We even produce carbon dioxide for the plant to grow faster. In 50 years, Vegetables and fruits have lost 30% of their vitamins and up to 80% of the minerals. The production of one kilogram of greenhouse tomatoes releases up to three kilograms of carbon dioxide and uses 50 liters of water. Trucks, cargo ships and airplanes travel billions of miles every year to supply our daily needs releasing greenhouse gases and other pollutants that contribute to global climate change. Food in the United States travels on average 1,700 miles from farm to consumer. Planting, fertilizing, harvesting, processing, packaging, transporting, storing, and preparing food account for 30% of global greenhouse emissions. On the other hand, growing vegetables in your garden or buying from local producers reduces the ecological footprint of food, and the products will not only be more nutritious, they will even taste better. In this garden, the honeybee displays the interrelationship between insects and plants by transporting pollen for fertilization. We cultivate a wide range of plants for our food, but also for a number of therapeutic substances found in medicinal species. However, hundreds of medicinal plants are at risk of extinction threatening the discovery of future cures for diseases. Nature is a closed system in which plants, insects, animals and humans interact and depend on each other. Destroying biodiversity, we also lose possible solutions for a more sustainable, healthier planet. But there is a great deal of knowledge to extract from the study of nature. The new science of biomimicry is based on the transfer of ideas inspired by nature. We already produce bio-inspired products based on the spiderweb silk and the honeycomb structure. We have copied nature to model the nose of the fastest train in the world 
to create fog harvesting nets and to clean without chemicals. Irritating, isn't it? A dripping tap can also waste as much as one liter of water per hour. That's a full bath every three days. A pin-sized hole in a water pipe would fill an Olympic swimming pool every year. These could be interesting bits of trivia if the amount of fresh water on Earth would be infinite, but it is not. Desertification has already started. Lake Chad has shrunk by 90% in the last 50 years. Southeast Spain has lost 6% of its arable lands and southern Europe is at risk of turning gradually into a desert. Human activities have become the primary source of pollution for our rivers, lakes and seas. Sewage, garbage, and even toxic pollutants are dumped into our water resources. About 90% of the available water is used for growing our food or used in our industries. Human beings need, on an average in a day, 30 liters to sustain their basic needs. In addition, it takes up to 3,000 liters to produce the food that they consume. In 40 years, Half of the Earth's population will have problems in accessing clean water. Today, nearly one billion people don't have safe water to drink. Every 15 seconds, a child dies from it. We are polluting the air, the water, and we are causing changes in the ecosystems. The direct health effects can already be seen all over the world in the overall mortality rates caused by droughts, floods, epidemics and pollution. Climate sensitive diseases are responsible for as much as a quarter of the total burden of disease worldwide. And in the process of neglecting our environment, our own body is being damaged. Exposure to chemical or toxic compounds, excess of junk food or drinks, could harm our DNA, the genetic suitcase that we will pass on to our children. We are intelligent beings, so we believe. We have developed technology so we can shape our environment to fulfill our needs and our desires. We have even gone to the moon. But even as the Greek philosopher Aristotle observed already more than 2300 years ago, what is common to the greatest number gets the least amount of care. Men pay most attention to what is their own they care less about what is common. We act as if our planet belongs only to us without even realizing it. But we cannot force the Earth to cope with our increasing demands. Perhaps it is time to reconsider the way we live. In 1961, Meteorologist Edward Lorenz proposed the theory of chaos. The theory says that a butterfly can start a storm, but another butterfly can cancel it. Will you be that other butterfly? <laughs>